Hi everybody, here's Christian from Teamwork Cast. And I am Putty from Teamwork Cast, and I promise this is not a repeat of X-Files. <laughs> we don't talk about this episode anymore. Uh, <laughs> this is a CCG, CCG Archaeology, our show where we uh, look at old uh, trading card games, uh, collectible card games. And uh, this is something very special, Nick. Something very special. Do you recognize it already? This is Proteus. I've actually never... I've never touched this set at all, ever. Yeah, so this is the first expansion, and the, I guess the only expansion, if you don't count... Um, classic. Classic uh, of uh, the, the classic Netrunner CCG. Uh, when did it come out? Uh, let me see. According to my research, um, it came out, what, five months after the initial release of Netrunner? Mm. So, like... Game comes out, then they release the rest of it. It's like they hadn't finished playtesting a certain a couple rules. Oh. So this introduced bad publicity. Yes. And it also introduced uh, hidden resources for the runner. Oh yeah, that's exciting because these are actually coming up these days. Yes. Or at least not uh, not not necessarily hidden resources, but like um, uh, face down cards for the runners, so the runners can do a bit of sec secret stuff. So this is um, this is uh, somewhat rare and actually uh, rare enough that it costs more now than it costs cost before. Right. So uh, I paid like over two hundred dollars for this. Jeez. For this entire box, yeah. So this has been actually really, really possible only with the uh, generous support from our Patreon campaign. So I would like to thank you, everybody who participated in our Patreon campaign. Um, this was really excellent. This enables us to really look into those beautiful old cards here. And if you want to check out our Patreon campaign and you're not participating, then certainly go there. It's uh, Patreon.com/slash Hack the Planet. Hack the Planet. <laughs> uh, so, I, I, off the bat, I'm kind of shocked, shocked at, at this artwork here. What the shocked lady? Uh, I what is going on here? It looks like she's been. Uh, this is like from uh, Goldeneye, and she's been spiked. Send spike. Oh, I haven't played Goldeneye myself. You've never watched the movie Goldeneye? Oh, I watched, but but I don't remember very well at all. To uh, me, it looks like somebody t uh, like did an oil painting, put in Photoshop, put like the shrink wrap filter around this, <laughs> and then in inverted everything. <laughs> it's possible. It it seems like this. So we have a blurb here on the side. Uh, for years, the data fort had cycled idle, a derelict from the com from a computer war, Nick. From a corporate war. For a corporate war. When a Max forward lifted its address, he expected a cakewalk. The fort was old, unmonitored. But then, it's not every day a runner faces a revolutionary security experiment. Discover the products of the new tech forward brought to life. Ice capable of transmuting into completely different count countermeasures. Smart icebreakers that can rewrite their own code. Proteus. Uh, whether you're a runner or a corp, expect a few changes. So the interesting thing is, is that uh, Max Forward is not a character in the cyberpunk universe. So it's a new character. Yeah. The you know the the thing that I so I'm looking through the, the card list. This game also introduced oh, the, the seven point agenda. Oh yeah, the um, government um, um, world takeover is, is it right? Uh, world domination. The world domination, yeah. So that's the one that we have government takeover. On. I wanted to show you, you know, what the what the actual package looks like when you when you flap to open the pack. Because this is a display, of course. This wouldn't be able available to normal players. It's something that like a store would order, and uh, then they would use it to sell the goods. Uh, I don't know how how these work. Do we just open this like this and it's like okay, or do you just flap flap in, inside here? No, you Let's leave try. them like that, or you uh, leave them like uh, closed, so it's a it's a, it's a theft deterrent. Oh, it's <laughs> wow! What what a effective th theft protection here. Uh, it's, it, my camera is a little bit too close here, so I can show you the entire thing. But yes, so we're gonna open today twelve of those packs. Have you figured out how to open up your packs now? No, I'm gonna actually. This is gonna be my practice run. <laughs> <laughs> so these are 36 packs. Uh, I already have, uh, gen gen through the generous donations of uh, Falco, I already have eight. And so I'm going to actually want to retain uh, 36, uh, 32 packs. 
So I can do two drafts because uh, for each draft we're gonna need 16 of those packs. Man, I'm gonna buy a ticket to Cologne so that I can come play in this draft. Man, this this is going to be really excellent. So let me see, 12. So I have never actually uh, looked at uh, too many of those, so. Oh, you're so, opening a row. Oh my god. I, I understood what you meant now. I understood what you meant. You leveled up your, your pack. I'm leveling game. up. Oh man, this is exciting. I never saw these cards before. Underworld Mole. So I assuming this is a common, right? Uh, underworld. What comes after T? Uh, yes, it's a The common. Ice Age! <laughs> So this is a gray ops, not a black ops, but a gray ops. We already had gray ops before. This says um, this is an operation. It says play only if runner installed any resources during his or last turn. Trace four. Oh no, I know which card this is. Trace four. If trace successful treasure resource uh, runner installed during his or her last turn, give her on the attack. You know what is this, Nick? No, what is it? This is helium alpha test. Ah. Uh... Uh, and it, I uh, now I understand why this card is so ridiculous and stupid. <laughs> because of this. Because, because it's basically just a re hey, reprint. Hey, everybody knows somebody who knows a little too much about anybody. Oh, that's a, a flavor test. <laughs> yeah. Uh, misleading access menus. Ice, uh, ice code gate. Uh, the subroutines end the run unless runner pays one credit. You gain three credits when you rest. Misleading access menus. Wow, it's huh. like a better pop-up window. It's pretty dope. Like it's cost zero to rest and it's one strength. I mean, it costs one to break. So yeah, it's like a pop window basically. Yeah. But you know, you only get it once. So afterwards, it does. It just costs one credit. So it's like a. Yeah. Hmm, I don't know. I like it. I I would play this. Especially, I like it. That's a code kit that actually does something. You wouldn't believe how many suckers try to access tools in certain decks. Death Yo-Yo, uh, Sentry Black Ice AP Brain Wipe. Do one brain damage and the run. If the runner passes Death Yo-Yo, you may choose to uninstall it, store it in HQ, and gain one credit. Huh. I, this is a trick I call walking the dog. Now, uh, I, there's something important to remember. Yeah. Is that in the late 90s when this would have come out, there was a strange resurgence of the love of the Yo-Yo. Uh, I guess it, there was, yeah. As, by the way, seven credits for two strength two, uh, sentry. Uh, I have to off, the, off the bat, I'm gonna say the artwork is so much more vibrant and colorful than on the on the core set cards. I'm really enjoying this. Like this is like really nice, really vibrant looking agenda here. I like so I like the the last bit on that yo yo. If the runner passes the death yo yo, you may choose to uninstall it, store it in HQ, and gain one credit. Yeah, but on the other hand, like, why would you do this? You already paid seven credits. Well, because if if the runner has already passed it, then it's probably going to be worthless or not something. That yeah, the runner would, runner would know. But on the other hand, like, just one credit, like, come on, give me like three credits or something. Yeah, you know? that's true. Um, uh, breeding ground, huh? Yeah, viral breeding ground. So I think we had already something similar, a uh, similar named card in uh, LCG. This is an agenda research ambush virus. Uh, when you score breeding ground trash, all cards installed in or or on the fort a breeding ground was installed in. When a runner access breeding ground, choose up to two programs for each advancement counter on breeding ground. Runner, br runner brings those programs into his... What? When you oh! Oh, interesting. So um, this is a basic agenda that protects itself. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's kind of like a little bit like aggressive secretary combined with an agenda. Yeah, that's kind of cool because you just sit there and put a bunch of things on it and kind of bait the runner to come and get it, and then they can lose half their stuff. Yeah, like if you if you if they get through your defenses, then at least they have to um, I, they have to uninstall two programs. So it's not trashing; it's just getting it back on the hand. But sometimes this can be like really deadly. Yeah. Like especially if you have programs where something is hosted on it. Like especially in the LCG. I don't know what it was, how it was in the CCG. Um, I also like I like that there is like this huge um, um, huge problem for the corporation to use this. Like when you score this, you have to destroy the server where it was scored in. <laughs> so it's basically just saying put this in a server without any protection yeah yeah i guess that's that's uh, that's what so it's saying you yeah. install advanced advance and then force the runner for the cost of two agenda points i guess so um 
I guess these are still our comments, right? Oh, yeah, they're still comments. I will tell mm -hmm. you when we do All right. So this is Datacomp. It's an ice wall and the run, if the runner passes Datacomp, pay one. So I guess this was a mechanic that, uh, the, the one that we had previously on Death, death Yo-Yo, that's a, that's a mechanic that's basically a re recurring thing. Like whenever yeah. a runner passes this ice, they c you can also get it back. Yeah. We kind of had like a similar mechanic with, um, um, what's, the, what's the, Yagura? Was it Yagura? No, not, not Yagura. Well, Asher uh, yeah, Himi, Himi Subako. Subako. Yeah, is, yeah, okay. Has this kind of like a similar effect. So um, this is cruising for Netwatch. For the Netwatch, stab. <laughs> 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 uh, it's a prep. Gain one credit and draw two cards. That is uh, the this... longest flavor text on any card ever. Go ahead, Nick. Back home on the bayou before it dried up, the good old boys would ambush federal patrolmen just to try out the new cyberware. Now we bushwhack stray netwatch goons just to try out our new programs. Some things don't go out of style. Digital data. Well, Dana. I, I should have been a girl the whole time. Oh. <laughs> Maybe she's an old girl. You don't, you don't know. <laughs> Back home on the bike. I'm back home. There's just two types of music, <laughs> country and western. Um, this is interesting because this is a runner card, and it seems like green level clearance. I, I don't think it's have... green level clearance, but for... For the runner, yeah. Uh, expendable family member. Oh, man. That's, oh, That's rude. Although my brother's pretty expendable. Uh uh This is, uh, this is weird. <laughs> One credit and trash. Avoid receiving a tag. That, I mean, that's kind of fun, but also you're an only child now. But that's weird because it's it seems like... Oh, it's a hidden resource. Yeah. Oh, look, it's one of the hidden resources. So you install this face down and the, and the corporation thinks like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a tech. And it's like, nope, res, uh, one credit trash and um, the attack is avoided. Yeah. So that's kind of nice because previously there was something like decoy yeah. where, where you out. can do this without the one credit. Um, but this one is hidden, so it's kind of like uh, more of a surprise. It's a wrecking ball. Came in like a wrecking ball. Uh, it it's is still a common. program strength four. It's noisy. Br noisy. A break wall subroutine uh, for zero credits. Uh, for two credits, pump um, for one strength. Oh hmm. my god! What strength the heck? Two. Also, in the nine, the late nineties, the Super Friends were popular again because of shows like Space Ghost Coast to Coast or C Lab. I don't know what any of those things that you so, just said. <laughs> but I just say the flavor text for this is form of a dwarf, shape of a pile driver. I'm sick of this Proteus crap. Give me a good old fashioned hammer program any day. Hmm. Uh, Interesting. Self, the, self critical Very self-critical. What's the bird lawyer? I can't remember. That's where I, all the super. I, I don't know what you're saying. Uh, uh, Rush Hour. Harvey uh, Birdman. That's what it was. I'm sorry. Uh, still, it still doesn't make any sense to me. Sorry. I'll send you episodes later. You can. No, not enough. Not enough. Uh, Reference, bro. Uh, rush hour uh, operation, so uh, event, I guess. So it's a prep, uh, uh, cost three. Make a run on R&D. If successful, access the three additional cards from R&D. You cannot use uh, noisy breakers during the run. Is that leg work? It, nah, it's a weird network uh, leg work where it costs more, but you get three additional instead of two additional and ones. You can't use noisy ice breakers. You can't and you cannot all... use noisy ice breakers. Weird. Sure, Weird. there are more signals to hide in, but there's a greater chance someone being around who will notice you. I kind of like this. I kind of uh, we already t t discussed this uh, on the last opening, but uh, this idea that um, uh, you are rewarded for for using uh, additionally rewarded for using um, stealth. Stealth is kind of like something that I really need uh, that is still missing. I think. Well, for, it's for, for... weird. Like stealth. I guess stealth is just recurring credits in this netrunner which i guess is a cleaner yeah. mechanic but is by yeah. no means I I, I I i don't know anyway i think it's also very evocative like you are using noisy breakers which are kind of like you know which are easy to spot but then there's like stealth breakers which are kind of like you know oh, and but then you get like additional advantage because you didn't raise the alarm you know yeah a uh, streetwear distributor i gotta say i really like the artwork on this one again like really enjoying the artwork on the Prode proteus stuff so far uh, resource BBS position, take one credit from streetwear distributor if it has any bits at the start of each of your turns. Uh, and click and for a click, put three from the bank on streetwear distributor. So this is basically these uh, marked accounts, right? Do you know uh, what other art Matt Wilson did for this game? Go, go ahead. Oh, uh, do the drain, right? The, the Department of Truth Enhancement. 
And do the drawing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, I can tell. Like, the, the artwork is really nice. Uh, networked center. It's an upgrade. Uh, region asset. The difficulty this of is gray. This is rare. Ooh, nice. Uh, the difficulty of gray ops agendas in starting this fort is reduced by one. Hmm. Uh, lands and lands to swans. Oh my god. <laughs> 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 the lands and wands of the late 20th century gave way to swans, super wide area networks, which were as graceful as the data radius. Swan, I guess it's swans, but you say lands, land and wand, now you swans. have to say swan. Um, so this is basically a um, sand sand city grid for gray ops agendas, and we already had a couple of um, other cards that reduce their difficulty costs of gray ops agendas. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think this makes that kind of like a very viable uh, thing. Hunt and pack. <laughs> Hunt and pack. So this is uh, the uncommon, right? Yeah, you're on uncommons now. Uh, this is uh, cost one a sentry, a strength four for each rest piece of ice installed outside of uh, outside hunting pack. Hunting pack has one subroutine as follows. Uh, subroutine trace five is if successful, give an attack. Uh? So this gives you a lot of traces and a lot lots of additional tags when you have something installed in outside of it. So, in so front it's of it. like a base level ice and then you just install three or four things in front of it. It's kind of like a reverse chum for tags, I guess. Yeah. It gets I mean, stronger. It's interesting that it's trace five. Hmm. I mean, that's. I mean, you're going to have to pay because of the way the traces yeah. worked. They it, paid it work differently. In these days, it would be great. But back yeah. then, I think that wasn't like, okay, whatever. I'm just get, I'm going to produce some tags. Oh, look at this Raymond Ellison guy. Upgrade sys up, install Raymond Ellison only if it's in a subs subsidiary data fort, and then like wall of text trash. Remove any number of advancement counters from cards installed in this data fort. Gain three credits from each advancement counter removed. Use this ability only during a run. I think the that's awesome. The, wow. At the end of the run, return to the bank any of the bits gained that you did not spend. <gasps> oh! Because, I mean, there are no cards in the current Netrunner that would allow you to remove advancement counters from anything in the corporate corporation is done i also like that you yeah like that's kind of like an emergency guy when it's like you have something that is super advanced yeah. in a server and you're like okay i'm gonna score this and the runner can run on its fort anyway you can like monetize quickly monetize those advanced encounters yeah. to rest some ice yeah. for example uh, but a cool thing is that you don't get them back so it's not like you can like self-destruct an agenda basically it's it's basically just to make uh, make resin of stuff and on that for it more uh, economical so I, I like this Foo -bar. Foo -bar. Uh, it's an icebreaker noisy uh, for 10 credits jesus break a subroutine of the type chosen for foobar plus one uh, for two credits plus one strength and for zero credits choose whether foo breaks code gates sentries or walls use the ability only once whenever you break uh, an ice subroutine with foobar lose one credit from stealth card so it's a noisy breaker wait a minute use this ability only once ever yeah because it, it's uh yeah which kind of sucks <laughs> Yeah. Unless you can uninstall Fubar and then reinstall it, but at 10 a pop, that's going to be awful. Yeah, it's. I don't know if I like this, but it's kind of like a good way to pluck uh, like a hole if you don't have the right breaker for a given type. Yeah. It's it, also like you, you can do it during, during a run, which is kind of not bad. I can see him being kind of a uh, prototype for Crypsis. Uh, Crypsis I already opened actually in a different I haven't recorded this but this is oh. Bartmus Crypsis was the Bartmus Memorial Breaker oh okay I hope and, we... and maybe we, should, we can get it back at some point because Crypsis was interesting they changed the way yeah, like nowadays you put like counters on Crypsis uh -huh. ba back then you at, whenever you break an ice with it you roll a die ah. and if you, if you roll a certain number then you trash Crypsis man uh, the Bartmus Rolling Memorial dice. Breaker uh, so this is Disintegrator. Uh, it's a program to MU. Uh, two credits deres a piece of ice at the end of your run. Use this ability only when you have just broken all the subroutines of that piece of ice and have successfully passed this. I can't believe it's a program. Uh, oh, it costs six credits, but you don't trash it. So it's kind of like a infinite uh, crescentus. I like this. I would love yeah. to have this kind of ice these days. Imagine with like a uh, Yogg. Program. Yogg, a couple net ready eyes, and a Disintegrator. And you're just like, ha ha, run it through. So many things. 
All right, Snake. I'm so see. proud of you watching this now. It was so. Uh, it was like watch, listening to the X Files uh, episode last. It's, time. it's it's like it's like watching your kid run, uh, walk for the first time, right? <laughs> it's something like that. I'm so proud. I'm so proud that you can unbox those boosters. Mm, credit oh, blocks. I, I love it because every card is new and exciting. Credit blocks. I sentry uh, and the subroutine and the run. Whenever you rest credit blocks, you may pay one credit above the rest cost to make it a wall instead of a sentry. Oh, and so interesting. That's huh. cool. There's not enough transformer ice out there. Yeah, so it's kind of like um, what what is the name of that card that we have? Um, change link and, yeah. and, and and stuff like that. I guess right. Change link is a change link. Yeah, change link and uh, lichen and all that stuff. Or all this morph morph it, ice. Advance it, and when it's even, it's a code. Yeah. Game. When it's this, odd, this, this seems much more elegant. Yeah. But on the other hand, like you, you can only use it when you res it, so you cannot change it afterwards. I know, but and six strength, uh, six uh, cost is kind of. Those Hardcore. few turns that you have where the runner might be struggling to find breaker of the other type would be interesting. Uh, play only if runner attempted a run uh, during this his or her last turn. Trace six. Ooh. If trace is successful, give the runner one tag for each point by which you trace exceeded his or her link. It's uh, it's, it's the, operation strength uh, cost four. So this is um, the NBN, uh, NBN mid seasons. Part. Mid-season replacements, yeah. But of course, again, trace six means that you can pay a maximum of six credits. So this is way less powerful than the mid-season that we have these days. Where you Le- recently, I had like a game, again, one of those games where we just did nothing for ha- for an entire game, and then the entire game was decided with a mid-season trace of thirty. But the mid-season replacement is only if the runner stole an agenda last time yeah that's so true and this is just for is running just, right yeah and mm. yeah so that's you're right I, I never noticed this snowbank ice wall uh credits zero to res uh and it is a subroutine uh, end run unless runner pays one you gain three credits when you rest snowbank uh, we all kind of already had this didn't we yeah that's, it seems like they actually have some there's a diff- wait a minute type. that was that's what that was a different one right yeah yeah, misleading access menus were the, was the one previously. That was a code gate. This is an ice wall. Yeah. Really cool. Really cool. Uh, this one is uh, strength zero. The other one was, I think, a bit stronger. There isn't enough drip econ in ice currently. But it's not like you would break it anyway, right? No. Good. Riddler. Uh, code gate. Uh, two credits. Riddler has one uh, subroutine at the run. Subroutine for the present encounter. Use this ability only when the runner encounters Riddler. Huh? That's a riddle, Nick. That's a riddle. What? Riddler has one. Oh, you pay two credits, and then it gains an endurance subroutine for the present uh, encounter. Uh... So you can add additional subroutines when it when the runner runs into this. Each present encounter. I also like the the um, um, the flavor text here because it's the flavor text now on. Theophilus backbiter. Oh. So why is a raven like a right protect? Which is a quote from um, from uh, Alice in Wonderland. Mm. Corporate hand hunters. We see an agenda here, ladies and gentlemen. Whenever uh, it's a five three, whenever corporate hand hunters successfully does damage, run, uh, runner's hand size is reduced by one. Uh, when one c- uh, click to do one meat damage, you save it only if runner is tagged. Hmm. So this is basically like um, a private security force, only it additionally does basically brain damage. I like that it's a meat damage that lowers their hand size. Yeah, it's basically brain damage. I mean, but they're why saying do... it's meat damage because you can prevent meat damage. Yeah, I guess it's more difficult to prevent brain damage. I think so. Also, uh, man, this artwork. Ugh. <laughs> I'm half naked with boobs that don't make sense. Why? And this artwork gives me brain damage already. It's like special order. Oh look, blue man group. <laughs> I blew my I blew myself. Uh, uh, prep all hands. all hands. Make a run on HQ if successful. Access uh, three additional cards. Uh, you cannot use noisy breakers during this run. So again, like an overpowered leg work, uh, but you can only use uh, you cannot use noisy breakers. I'm the redecorator. Redecorator. The <laughs> icebreaker killer. One MU. One credit to break up to two sentry subroutines on a single piece of ice. Three credits plus one strength. Could we please have this in criminals? <laughs> Could we please have this in criminals? Like any kind of sentry breaker that's actually good. I mean, nine credits is a lot to invest in, but breaking two sentry subroutines for one credit, yes, please sign me up. 
and the fact that it it costs like three to pump is not that bad i would say uh because like at string three is like like especially in new lcg there's like almost no uh no uh sentries which are stronger what? than that who says this I've wanted to name a killer this ever since my SATs went out claiming to schools that I plan to become an interior decorator. On the card, does it say who said this? Redecorator. <laughs> oh, God. It doesn't say who said this, but it would, it's great. Liberated savings account. Uh, hidden resource for 7 credits and trash. You get 11 credits. You may use this ability whenever you pay any cost or penalty. What that? I, I guess why can't it just say you gain four? I mean, I guess because I understand. you have to have seven. You yeah. have to have seven. Yeah. It's, it, the restriction is weird that you can use this ability whenever you pay any cost or penalty. Is that only when you pay, or is that also when you? That's, that's a good question. Yeah, that's a strangely worded card. Yeah, it's it's weird. Also, this guy is like looking like he's pleasuring himself with a CD-ROM. Are you forgetting to record your credit card transfers again? Decoy signal zero cost uh, prep. Make a run whenever you approach an unrest piece of ice during that run. Expose it. You may check out before the corp decides whether to rest to rest the ice. I think we have something similar which is called uh, recon, mm -hmm. and it's not good. It's also max forward. This character that I can't find anything about. Oh yeah, the max forward. Neat piece of code. It reminds me of a weave I used to know. Now use just some weave that I used to know. Oh, how boring. Boring bit. Six credits. Uh, program Icebreaker Worm. A break as wall subroutine for two credits. For one credit, punk one. Whoever wrote this flavor text, I'm going to find you and I will kill you. An effective drill, but pretty dull. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so this is an iceberg ice wall. Do one net damage. Oh, interesting. So a wall that does net damage. Nice. For for two credits, iceberg has one endurance subroutine for the present encounter. So again, uh, you can kind of pump this ice while it's being encountered. Four for four. It's pretty sweet. Uh, Schlaghund pointers. Oh wait, iceberg was your rare. I apologize. Oh, it is. Yes. Ooh. Nice. Schlaghund point, uh, pointers. Play only if runner has attempted a run. This game? This game? What? <laughs> <laughs> trace three. If trace is, um, is successful, give runner attack. Pay one credit in addition to the normal cost for each point of trace above zero. So you have to pay six to actually have a trace three? Yeah. Wow. This is... This sounds like a very bad game. That is a messed up card. Uh, card, I mean, I guess uh, the fur the upper text is at least you know, like it probably happens in every game. Yeah. So you, it's difficult for the runner to avoid this this way. I mean, I guess you would just sit there and wait until they don't have any money, and you have a lot of money. Uh, you know what it is? I think it. I think it's a good card for like maybe for um, like rush kill decks. Where it's like, I'm going to use this before you're even able to uh, play your uh, link card. So you cannot even beat the tra this trace. Huh. So it doesn't even matter if the trace is super expensive. Dog pile. Oh man, that, that, uh, uh, that uh, artwork here certainly looks like a dog pile of... Oh, it's a sentry though. Do one uh, net damage for each rest piece of ice installed outside dog pile. Uh, and second subject is end the run. Dogpile has plus one strength for each rest piece outside of insult, uh, insult outside of it. So another card that kind of benefits from cards that are outside uh, insult in front of it. It's kind of like re re reverse uh, chum. Man, that art this guy has done. You know, this is this is a solid ice for five credits and end the run. Uh, century end the run. I, oh, why he not? did marked accounts. Mm. Mm. Imperial guard, dead eye. Casting. Crumble. Uh, so these are, I guess, our uncommons again still. Yes. Um, if program virus, uh, after each success run on HQ, give the corp a crumble counter. Two or more crumble counters allow you to trash at no cost any cards accessed from HQ, even if the cards cannot be unnormally trashed. This is pretty hardcore, man. Holy cow, that's pretty fun. Dang. Because you don't spend the counters. It just, you do, it just has to have the counters. Huh. Uh, and of course, the corp can remove the counters with three clicks. And the militia run. Oh, we already had this. Uh, so make a run. If run is successful, do not access cards. Instead, trash all rest 
eyes on that fort on which you just made a run, and then Corp gives you three tags. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> no, we, the, the, the demolition run we have in the LCG is a very different card. This is amazing. That card is amazing. I also like the, <laughs> the flavor text. Go ahead. Oh, God. It says, sure, it was worth it. Now hurry me get back. They'll be here any minute. <laughs> Too bad the artwork is just meaningless. It's, it's just, just some some gibberish. So at this point, we realized that opening all those boosters will take a bit more time than expected. So we decided to split this video into multiple parts. On the next part, we're going to open some more boosters, some more Proteus boosters. I hope you will join us next time around. Until then, we're going to put this stuff in a museum. But it belongs in a museum.